everybody, it's Debbie Derryberry, the voice of Jimmy Neutron, Clay, Draculaura, Coco Bandicoots, an alien from Toy Story, and lots of other cartoon voices. Join me for In Conversation with Amber the Fangirl, ATF. Hi guys, Amber here. Welcome back to In Conversation with ATF. My guest today is a voice actress who has so many credits. I'm just going to go through them all real well, not all of them, but my personal favourites. She is the voice of Coco Bandicoot in Crash Bandicoot, Wednesday Adams in the 1992 animated series of the Adams Family. Yeah, around that time. It was around the time the um the live action film was released with Raul Julia and Angelica Hudson. Yeah, um, Jenny Harper in Life with Louis, um, the daughter in. Frank Moise, What a Mess. I'm not sure if you remember What a Mess, do you? Yep, yep. Good. I was going to say, because that came from England, that did, and then it was imported to America, and it, and it, uh, it yep. was carried on from there. Um, Maureen Murphy in F is for Family, Draculaura in Monster High, Noki in Curious George, The Aliens from Toy Story, JJ Herky Savannah and Revan Evan from JJ the Jet Plane, Jimmy Neutron in Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius and The Avengers of Jimmy Neutron, Clay from Playhouse Disney, Tad in various Leapfrog videos and DVDs, Skeeter in Hey Vern, it's Ernest. I think the Skeeter, I, must, I think I misspelled it on my notes, I believe. Uh, let me have a look. Yeah, Skeeter, that, that's the name of your character, isn't it? Cool. And I believe you're a stunt double for Free Willy. It says on your Wikipedia page that you were a stunt. I didn't yep. know that. I'll tell you all about it. Wow. My guest is the one and only Debbie Derryberry. Welcome. Hi. Thank you, Amber. Nice to be here with you. It was tough getting a time when we could both meet, but glad to be here. Yeah. Um, Let's see, uh, in those, in that list of things you read off, let's see, um, just a correction, I think in JJ the Jet Plane, I'm just JJ and Rev and Evan. I'm not Herky. I think I'm Savannah, though. Um, maybe I was Herky in oh, some really? of them, but I, I seem to remember Herky was another gal. Uh, hmm, I'll have to have a look real quick. Um, anyway, it was a long time ago, and I'm not going to ever remember it's fine. Watch it. In fact, I'd like to start off by asking, how are you? I always ask everyone this. How I you, am Debbie? great today. It's been uh, sunny and very hot here in Southern California. And today we have rain of all things. We never get rain like you guys do in the UK. But uh, I am good and just got done coaching a student and lots of auditions and um Yesterday, I had lunch with the producer from Chalk Zone and just lots of things going on all the time. Mostly, I um, I want to go out in the jacuzzi because it's so cold. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, it's all good. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm perfectly well, thank you. I'm having, a little, I wouldn't say a little bit of trouble with, you know, school and stuff like that. But apart from that, I'm OK. Thank you for asking. Good. I am fully vaccinated and thrilled about it. I am everybody, too. good girl. Everybody should be vaccinated. I want to say that up front. Brilliant. I mean, um, we we've had not a lot of events in England since obviously the pandemic. You know, well, we are still in the pandemic, but so it's like kind of under control now. I've been to only one event, and mm -hmm. that that's it really. But yeah, I suppose. It's, kind of under control here I'm <coughs> presuming I'm not sure what it's like in America what's it like in America for you guys well we still need to be very careful and there still is a lot of contagion going around I think a lot of people are becoming complacent with it and thinking that they're done with the um done with lockdown done with masking and they're done with being careful I don't think there's any getting past being careful. We just need to continue to be vigilant and careful and stay masked and not sing in public if you're not vaccinated and not subject other people to being around your spew if you're not vaccinated. And, you know, for me as a voice artist also, um, you know, I hear people say, oh, it's just a cold. Yeah, maybe it's just a cold for them, but it could kill someone else. It could ruin your lungs. It could take over your chest and make you not be able to do your job which is me it's speaking so um yeah can't be too careful and um for the most part as long as you're masked you can do pretty much everything here you know go shopping and uh, go out to the restaurants and uh mostly i like to cook because i'm a really good cook so we eat at home 
Well, I've had COVID before. I had it last month and it was dreadful. My whole family got oh, it. Oh, was it? And what was it like for you? Um, I was ill for about a week. I had breathlessness, coughing, chills, headaches, which were probably the worst part about it because I literally just, they were so painful. Oh. Um, and I just felt really just off, off all over, really. Oh, no. Well, I'm so glad you're better. Thank you. And um, yeah, so that's my two takes on on, on the pandemic. <coughs> and that's I'm going to a convention in, a, I have this cough because I had a, a sinus infection, which wasn't COVID, but it's left over. But we're going, I'm going to a convention, a com- comic convention in Philadelphia uh, next month at the end of March. And oh, wow. I'm going because everybody has to be vaccinated, not just negative test. And they're having those plastic shields. And mm-hmm. unlike other conventions, I won't be touching or hugging or uh, standing next to anybody, but hopefully they'll be able to see me through my mask. Yeah, so it's that, exciting yeah. to think about a That's convention. Right? Really, <laughs> right? No, I mean, it's just. I don't know. <laughs> it's, you know how it's hard to talk through a mask. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so there's uh, a mask and a shield. Yeah, so they, they do that. I've seen they, them do, they do that a lot of events in America recently. I don't think they've done it at a few events in England. The one I did didn't have plexiglass and masks weren't really that required, but that was really when we weren't in lockdown. And um, yeah, yeah, we were just sort of, uh, you know, just when the, when the cases were really low. So... I suppose, yeah. Well, I mean, there's the one I went to was in the northwest in Liverpool, but there was one in London around the same time that had masks required and plexiglass and stuff like that. So it's really just it depends on the sort of stances or you know what the organisers think is best. So, well, let me ask you, which since you're a con uh, uh, attendee, and which one do you think that they would uh, would be the best for me to attend? Because I've never been to a convention in uh the uk and i'd like to be invited i'd like to go but i wonder oh. which one i always thought you had been to a convention in england because you visited cornwall at christmas yes it's because my um we have relatives down in cornwall and <coughs> we like to visit them down there and it's so beautiful down there um so we kind of drove all over you know to the land's end and in cornwall and up to london and in Penzant, um bristol uh, yeah. yeah, it was a nice visit, and we had a lot of um, mushy peas and Uh-oh. mulled wine. <laughs> Sounds like English food, definitely. Well, yeah. mm, I suppose MCM is one that I have, I think, London and Birmingham they do. They have two London events every year, May and October, okay. and then um, they have Birmingham in November. Um, I've been to mm-hmm. London when I met Tara Strong at the last London one they did before the pandemic. So, uh-huh. yeah, she was really nice. Um, yeah. And then you've got Monopoly events who do Liverpool, Manchester, Wales, Scotland, oh. um, Edinburgh and Aberdeen. And they're introducing oh. Northern Ireland and London. So that's really the more widespread one, I suppose. But um, they really you know they, they don't they I guess they invite guests if they're asked for so I yeah might, yeah I'll put in a little message saying could you try and invite Debbie Derryberry to one of your events thank you yeah. and um if um if you have a moment uh, I know you're in school but email me those uh convention names and I can have my booker reach out as well oh yeah that's fine that's completely fine yeah um great we'd I love can... to meet lovely to meet you in person Amber yeah, we'd love to meet you too. I mean, um, in the one in May, the Liverpool one, they've got Nolan North going. I'm not sure if you have you ever met Nolan. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so they've got him going. Um, at the one just before the pandemic in March, this was about a week or two before the UK went into lockdown, actually. So uh-huh. this was just before. Um, Frank Welker was there doing his first UK right? convention appearance. <laughs> So, oh um, my goodness, he is just the sweetest man. Love Frank. Anyway, we're getting a. I don't know if this is the what you wanted to do in the it's okay. interview or if you have a. You know, I just wanted to ask really questions. Sidetracked. Um, what did you didn't you have like a rap party at the LA Zoo for Curious George? Because I've seen a few photos. Yes. How in the world do you know about these things? Yes, we had a really fun rap party with the best food, and it was right next to the giraffes. And oh right, why, it, I had a why was it right next to the monkeys? <laughs> um, I think the um, 
probably the monkeys would hurl things at the people. It's uh, it was next to a like a indoor gazebo place that had yeah. an outdoor patio. And it's kind of where they do their events. I'm just trying to find found it. I found the phone. So I think it's you and who's the voice director on Curious uh, Chris George? Zimmerman. Chris Zimmerman. That's it. Yeah, yes, so many yes, voice yes. directors. I know a lot of them. Charlie Adler, Andrea Romano, Susan wow. Blue, Colette Sunderman, Chris Zimmerman. Yeah, yeah they're just great. Yeah, I found. Wow, the phone you do way. know them. You know your stuff. Yes, that's the picture. I don't know when that's that was taken. the one uh, that was taken at, towards the end of the party. We had been dancing a bit, I think. Aww. It was good fun. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I'm so jealous. I just am amazed that you know so many people in the VO business. Well, you really are serious about this. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Um, I recently turned 18, actually, only about three days ago. So <laughs> I'm pretty much. Happy birthday. That. You. I have a wow. here. Um. <laughs> there you go. Does that mean you can have a have a pint now in mm -hmm. England? Yeah. yeah. Um, in, in the all US, this you have to be twenty one. Oh, really? Yeah. All this stuff. I'm, I have to apologize about this. This is all my birthday presents. I haven't got around to sorting them out yet. We've just. I yeah, I can't. Holiday. I can't see them. Well, it's this big well, bag. It's a backpack that I got. <laughs> so, okay. um, yeah. Right. I've got a few questions. For you. Well, not a few. Maybe a um. A lot. Um, <laughs> so I'd like to obviously start off by asking, how did you get into voiceover? Well, I'm. <clears throat> I was a, actually a pre med at, at UCLA. I was going to go to med school, and I've always uh, sang and written songs, and decided I wanted to move to Nashville to be a country singer. And I didn't get any jobs as a grown up, but I started getting work as a session singer as a kid's voice. And one thing led to another and somebody said I should try cartoons and I didn't know what they were. I didn't I didn't know that was a thing. I mean, I've always uh, studied acting since I was like eight years old. I think I did my first theater show on stage and um, a lot of performances singing. And uh, then in Nashville, I did some TV commercials. And uh, then I was in Nashville, I was doing uh, I'm little I'm the size of a 11 year old boy and so i've had a lot of jobs uh relating to that um and this job i was working on hey Vern, it's Ernest. it's a saturday morning kids show with jim varney yeah. and i was doing stand-in work for the boys who were the stars of the show one of those boys was a, a actor a little kid named scotty manville and scotty's mommy said why don't you do voiceover? You'd be so good at it. And I thought, I don't even know what that is. She said, well, here's some names. And she gave me Sue Blue's name and a bunch of other people's names. And I, you know, sent them my demo, a little cassette. And uh, they said, good demo, but you really need to live in LA. So I moved back home, moved back to LA and signed with an agent. Uh, actually, Jenny McSwain walked me into an agent. Yeah, she's she's another voice director, yeah. Yes. And then I started working in voiceover after about two weeks. And wow. that was 30 years ago. It's just been nonstop. Wow. And just the thing is so, 2022 now. I know. And so I've been singing. I still sing and I still, I have three preschool albums out for children. And I have a, f a few albums out for my country band, the three-part harmony girl band called Honey Pig. So that's for fun. We still do that. Wow. And now I teach voiceover and I've written a couple books on it. It just, I just kind of followed what doors opened for me and some things that sounded uh, attractive. And it's just been a lot of fun. So I can't say there's any game plan, like any roadmap, like this is how you do it. That's how yeah. I did it. Yeah. Now it's different. Well, Voice acting in England is a lot different to America. I mean, in America, you've got about, I don't, I'm not if I'm exaggerating a lot here, it could be true, about over 200 voice actors living in LA at the moment. But with England, oh, probably, probably got, closer to 2,000. Probably 2,000, yeah. Um, so over here, we've only got about 40, 50. We don't have, we tend to use really the same voice actors for most stuff. Or if hmm. we want, if we make a show, we tend to get like a British celebrity, like, I don't know, like David Tennant or Benedict Cumberbatch to voice them. So. 
interesting yeah. well maybe i need to come to the uk and do voice over there yeah definitely we would definitely welcome you with open arms we need thank you we de- we're, we have a few american voice actors living in england i mean there's lorelei king kerry shale but they're more oriented towards british shows but then they've mm-hmm. done some american dub shows but recorded from England, I believe. Interesting. So, yeah. Because there's some, there's like Rachel Naylor is the, is it the VO, um, the Buzz? Rachel Naylor has a, a group called the Voice, yeah. uh, VoiceOver Network, I think. I think, yeah, I think I know. Who are. <laughs> and um, she has a lot of UK members. And so oh. that, maybe it's just that these are the, the 40 actors you always hear of, but I know there's a lot more than that wanting to do it and, you know, uh, working it every day. Maybe not so much in the animation, but certainly in the other facets of voiceover, you know, video games and commercials, audiobooks, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have this, okay, this is a really good question. How did you get the role of Coco Bandicoot in Crash Bandicoot? I wish I could tell you. I don't even remember. I probably auditioned for it. You know, back in that those days, it was before cell phones. So your agent would uh, buzz you on your beeper and you'd pull over and you'd call on the, on the payphone and or from if you were home and the agent would tell you where to go and when to go. And you'd show up at the studio and you'd go to the piece of paper and put your name in and then go to the booth and the, the director would direct you and you'd audition and then you'd go home and forget about it unless your agent calls you and tells you, yes, guess what? They picked you for the role. So that's probably how it happened. Mm -hmm. Um, But I was Coco for so many years that I don't, I don't even remember anymore how it started. Mm. Interesting. (laughs) There's there's my answer. Were you approached to be Coco in Crash 4, It's About Time? What was the situation with that? Because I believe they got a different actress to do Coco. Um, yeah, I don't know why they picked a different actress to do Coco. Same with uh, was... Crash. Yeah, they got yeah. Uh, Scott White instead of Jess Harnell to do it. Yeah, I was spectacular as Coco, and I love all my fans who loved me as Coco. So um, I'm sure she's doing a fine job. I don't yeah. know what it is. I believe Maybe it's because I got old. They don't want old people or something. I believe it's for... I don't know if it... Because there's a new game out now called Crash Bandicoot on the Run which is like a mobile mm. game. I'm not sure who voices her and that. Uh, if I'm, just... I, I, I'm not sure. I know they reused me for one of the mobile games. Crash so... on the Run. Uh, Crash on the Run is not on here. Crash on mm. the Run voice cast. Because they have voice actors on this, as I've heard. Uh, like yes, it says three. you. Yes, it does say you're credited yeah. so... on IMDb for it. They do what's called a lift, where they uh, just basically take a re-recorded voice and lift it right off and use it on another platform. Uh, so I, I think see. that's what they did. Uh, well, at least you're in it. That's that's one thing I'm happy about. At least they got you back for it. So Yay! Happy. Um, have you been voicing Coco since the very start? I have to quickly check because I've just closed. The I don't think so. Be... I I don't think so. I think there were some other Cocos before me. Uh, it was Vicky Winters, then Hendon Walsh, and then it was you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because yeah, Coco didn't appear until the second game, which was <coughs> Cortex Strikes Back. Yeah, and then Hendon see, Walsh the thing was about video racing. games, um, video games as opposed to cartoons, mm-hmm. is that uh, in cartoons we used to go in together and they'd give you the whole script. Yeah. In video games, uh, you don't get a script. You don't know what's happening. You don't know who else is on it because you never see them. You go in by yourself. Here's the line. You don't see it because they haven't made it yet. They tell you sometimes you have two seconds to do this line or here's the line. So it's you just um, are a bit disconnected from the art piece, from the whole game. You do what you do and then they put it together. Yeah. So yeah. so what you see at the end it's not what we see when we're making it. And that's where the that's where the voice acting part comes in, that you have to be able to bring something to life that hasn't been brought to life before by animation or by anyone else. 
Yeah. Uh, may I ask, have you met Corey Burton before? Because he was Dr. Engine and Crash Bandicoot and he was Entropy and uh, Nitrous Oxide. Have you met him in person? Yes. Yes, I pretty much met everybody. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Me and Corey, we keep in touch via text message. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Corey yeah. is, um, he's brilliant. I know. I love it. I love his voice over work. He's He's amazing. I'm he's, trying to get him really, to be on my show. He but... really is a brilliant voice actor. Yeah, and he has Asperger's like me. So Tell Corey I said so. I will do next time I speak to him, definitely. I'll let him know. I'm trying to get him on my show, but that's just whenever he feels like it because he's a private person and, you know, I don't talk to him that much because he likes his own space uh, privacy uh, if uh, that's the easiest way to explain it so yeah. maybe later on in the Understood. year could get him i don't know but i've heard well, that i think um yeah. i get i get requests from people all the time and i i really just have to limit it because i don't have a lot of time but you were very persistent and you were very um when i asked you to email again at a certain time a few months later you did and you reminded me and i I put some value in that. So good job, Amber. Thank I'm you. The, the thing is persistence, you know, just keep at it if that's what you really want to do. And, you know, even if um, there's this thing that goes on with the human brain is when you see something once you might not remember or I won't. But if it comes across my desk two, three, four times, then I go, wait a minute, I must know them. I've seen it before. Only I don't know them. But I've seen it before. So that makes your brain go, oh, I better pay attention this hundredth time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad I was persistent, but not like too forceful. Like, yeah, I, d- I don't mean annoying. I, I know, I know, mean, I know. Yeah, but um, sometimes I know, can come across as annoying if I email like every day saying, hello, hello, hello. Can I, can I interview you? Hello, can I, can I interview you for my channel? <laughs> <laughs> so as far and as then, it Oh, I wanted, to, I wanted to mention, sorry, I'm moving my blanket. It's under my chair wheel. Oh, that's it's fine. Cold today. Come on, get out from my chair wheel, Mr. Blanket. Oh no! <laughs> Hold on, I have to get it out. Okay, I got it out. It's cold today, so I have my F is for family. Oh blanket. wow! Wow! Yeah, it's upside down there, but uh, there that's so cool. <laughs> yes, I have it over me like a quilt because that's cold. That's brilliant. Um, when you mentioned F is for family, uh, you said I did Maureen which I do, but I also do six other characters oh. on that show. And, um, you know, it's, I don't, you probably haven't watched it. I'm I haven't sure watched it, but I've seen you post about Maureen a few times. <laughs> it's an excellent, well-written show with Bill Burr, a very funny comedian, but I play his daughter and uh, Bridget, who's very foul-mouthed 10 year old and um, Philip down the street and kitty who wears a dapper and well the nurse i plea her too so i have a, and all the babies so there's a lot of voices uh in every episode and i really love it it's a great show if you're easily offended or under 17 i would say ask your parents first because it's just f-bombs all over the place I turned yes. this like three days yes. ago, so I can legally. Yes, watch you it. did. Uh huh. It's so weird just thinking I'm 18 now that you can, I can legally buy. Okay, sorry to everyone for saying this. This is going to ruin my child. I can buy cigarettes. I can buy alcohol. I can legally vote in England. Yeah. I can watch 18 rated films, buy 18 rated games, films, anything. So <laughs> the world is open to you. Yeah, it's like I've unlocked. Well, the last level is 21. I'm not sure what you get at 21, but I know at 18 you can now legally drive in england so yeah i think of this it's odd but you can drive when you're 16 here yeah i think it is 60 you get learners at 16 and then you can properly drive at 18 or something mm. I, I don't know i don't know um but it, I, as i said i'm you know i just turned 18 i need to sort of explore the world a little bit more see what's that um everything will be at my fingertips you know yeah. uh Actually, I've got I've got more good questions for you on the way. Um, so you were Wednesday Adams in the Adams family. Now I have to tell yeah. you, I went through a big Adams family phase, and I remember going on one of your live streams and seeing in the background. This was like late 2019, early 2020, and I remember seeing like a big 
picture in the background of all the characters. I, I don't know, I can't remember if it was a cell or it had signatures from each of the voice actors. But I remember mm-hmm. asking you, what was it like to work on that show? Because John Astin was also Gomez on that show. So yeah. and there, there is a full cast photo I found on Facebook. <laughs> if I just, while I dig it up, um, what, what was it like working with John, may I ask? Um, he's one of just the nicest, nicest people you ever want to meet. He was um, just delightful. And so was Carol Channing and Rip Taylor, R.I.P. Um, yeah. um, uh, was it was Jenny Rob Elias. Yeah. Jenny Elias. Edie McClurg, Chris Salter, yep. Pat Fraley. Was, yep. I see, you know, I know them all. They're dear friends of mine, all of them. Um, you know, some there people have passed. I can't really see it, but... Will you, will you email me that? Sure, I will do indeed. I can't... I think... Is that you in the middle? I believe that's you. Yeah, that is... Probably. That, a that's short you in the middle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's you in the middle next to Pat. And on the front is Jim. And... Um, yeah, well, send it, email it to me and I'll find out if it's me. It's kind of hard to see on the phone. Will do. Yeah, yeah, I think it is you because that's John Aston at the back next to Carol Channing. I have this... I have this picture. Let's see. I don't know if you can see up top. That's the one. That's the one I was on about in that live stream. That oh, was yeah. the, that's the exact one. Yeah, wow. and then there's a cell underneath of, of Wednesday and Pugsley. Yeah. That they gave us each one of those and we had them signed by the whole cast. Wow. So, so um, it's John's signature on that. Uh let me go check. Probably everybody's is on it. Oh, hold on. Sure whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. Yeah. Let me just keep Let's keep going. So what will we talk? All right. What's your next question? I have just a um, a few more minutes here. So let's uh, get through these um, okay. next well, questions. Hey, I, I thought maybe we could do a part two in the future if I don't get most of my questions answered, if that's OK. Yeah, let's let's. Uh, yeah, because I did one with Lex Lang, who was Dr. Neil Cortex. So yes. um, how, how specifically long have you got left? Have you got until half past or have you got until... Yeah. Half past. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'd like to ask you then about Clay from Playhouse Disney. Now, you were the voice of Clay. Um, I didn't grow up with Clay, unfortunately. I don't believe we got him over here. Uh, but I've seen co- continuity videos on YouTube. Um, but wow, I'm so amazed. You know that little Clay figure that you've got? Is that the actual yeah. model that they used? Well, they had more than one, obviously, because they're made of clay and they had to be molded. But yeah, they gave that to me and it's wrapped in... Uh, cellophane and saran wrap and wow. it stays soft yeah so I still have him <laughs> and uh, the people that made him it was all claymation so of course recording that they'd say they'd show me the storyboard which looks like a comic strip yeah. and this is what's supposed to happen and then I do the voice and then they make the shots to match it or sometimes they'd make the shots first and know what lines I was to say um and because it was a uh, for preschool for very young, there was a, a pacing that has to happen that's a little bit slower. So everything he said had to be precise and very happy. I was so going to ask if you fun. could do still do the voice, and I guess you just answered my question. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I can. I can still talk. I can still do all the voices. Brilliant! <laughs> oh wow, that's so cool. And. My final question, obviously, well, for what for now, part two could be a thing. I'll have to I'll have to talk to Debbie, definitely. Um, how did you get the role of Clay? I know I'm not sure if you can remember or not, but it's worth um, asking. It was exactly the same way as the others. You know, you go in and you audition. Some of them you go to a location, uh, but most of them I drive into the agency, into my talent agent which we used to do, and we'd all sit in the waiting room and they'd give you your copy or your script, scripts that you were gonna do and you'd pop in the booth and they'd record you and you'd go home. And, you know, you do so many that you forget what you do. Like, um, uh, last week I had probably 45 auditions. 45? It's a lot, because there'll be a show with four characters My. and another show with five and, then they'll send you, you know, five or six commercial auditions that day. Mm-hmm. And they just add up. I might do, you know, five to ten auditions a day. And then there's five days in the week. So there you go. That's it can add up. And so that's just now. 
And there's a lot more projects now because there's so many more things streaming. But it's hard to keep track of the auditions I do, which is why I keep all my auditions on my Dropbox. So if I get a call back or I book it, I can always go to my phone, no matter what studio I'm in, and call it up and listen and go, oh, I did that character or that voice. Um, I know I digressed from the original questions of how I booked Clay, but it, uh, you know, when I actually met with the producers, it was um, um, a really good camaraderie with Lisa O'Brien and Mary, and um, she had a different name then. She's married now, she'll see a different name, but it was yeah. a good crew, you know, and uh, Andy, who now lives in England. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Wow. And I believe you worked with Tara Strong on that as well, because she was the character the page. She was like a little piece of paper. Yeah. She, played about Again, a word she played, and stuff. Yeah. Right, she played Paige, but we don't ever work together on those sorts so of things. you just recorded separately? Yeah. I mean, I, I know Tara just because... Uh, you She's know, great. Up a, a street apart, her boys and my her kids and my kids are friends. <laughs> we, have yes, <laughs> we have the same Who birthday. We have the same birthday, February 12th. Yeah. Excellent. He's brilliant. So, um, yeah. And did you have Tara on your show? I haven't had. She's agreed to an interview, but we haven't had the chance to arrange a time yet. So I'm just okay. still working on that. But I think she okay. would be a hoot, definitely. Oh, she'd be great. Yeah. Tara's yeah. awesome. Yeah, right. So I think we should wrap it up here. Part one. I'm, I'm going to say definitely part one because there's so much more to talk about, especially with the amount of characters that you voiced. Oh, so, so many, many I know. Yeah. Thank you, Amber. It's so nice to meet you and all of your Thanks fans. You Hello, too. YouTube land. And can I just thank any of you who are watching who follow me on TikTok? I made it to a million followers, which is great. Mm -hmm. And um. It's Debbie Derryberry for all of them, for TikTok and Insta and, and Twitter. And mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for having me. Welcome. So have an awesome day. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this interview with the wonderful Debbie Derryberry. There will be a part two in the future because there's lots more to talk about. So hopefully that will be coming your way in the next few months. So until then, stay safe, stay happy, and we'll see you around soon. Bye! Bye. And cut.